CMN was started by Donnie and Marie Osmond. One of their brothers was uh, had some medical issues, and so that's how the whole program started. And there are now 170 Children's Miracle Network hospitals nationwide. So it's a, it's a program that as a hospital is very desirable to be part of the program because of the funding from CMN National and also the, the resources that they have. And it's, um, cool. you know, not, not every hospital is accepted. So is that explicitly what we're fundraising for at the CMN mm -hmm. Network? Okay. You are. And we, and our funds, 100% of our funds stay here at UC Davis Children's Hospital. Cool. So even though, um, even though CMN is a national organization, every dollar that you guys raise, it stays right here. It doesn't go to the it doesn't go to, you know, pay a marketing person for CMN in Utah. Cool. Or or it it stays right here. A hundred percent of the proceeds stay here. Treat children, but we're the only level one acute trauma center. So we get the worst of the worst. You know, another right. hospital might right. might treat a child and get to a point where they just can't do it. They don't have the they don't have the, the doctors and the specialists that we have, so we get a lot of kids that are transported. Um, and it's a lot of the really bad trauma that you see. We cover 33 counties and 5 million people. So the next closest children's hospital would be Valley and Fresno. Then you have Oakland and Reno. So we cover a huge, huge territory. And one of the other um, programs that CMN helps fund is the transport, the transport system, which would be the helicopter and the pediatric ambulance. So, you know, if you have a child that's in a hospital in Reading, um, and they they just can't do any more for that child, and they feel that that child needs to come to UC Davis Children's Hospital, we actually pay for the child to be transported here if necessary, and, it, and we're not reimbursed. And about hundred, uh, I mean, about 1.5 million per year. Just in transportation costs. Just in transportation, we do about 600 a year. Oh. We um, we're a safety net hospital as well, so if if a child can't pay, we treat them regardless. Right. So we don't we don't advertise free care, but. Um, yeah, if we would never turn a child away. So we don't if if there's secondary insurance. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to seven. <laughs> then, you know, that's great, but if not, the child still gets the same treatment. So. Um, if there's an invasive procedure or something that's not fun, they do it in this room so that the child knows um, what's going to happen. They explain it very well. They don't leave any surprises. They, if they're able to, they give the kids choices um, to the extent that maybe you want your blood taken out of your left arm and not your right arm, or you want, you know, you don't get a choice on whether you have the procedure done. But they try to empower the kids a little bit mm -hmm. and, and make them feel like they're part of their healing process. Mm -hmm. And they have a little gift, a uh, little treasure chest, mm -hmm. and um, so they really do try to make it a, as, as you know, as less tra at least traumatic as possible. Oh, I gotta see what's there. Yeah, you have to check out this. <laughs> and we're really lucky because there are you know, wonderful people out there that they have a bag of um, Happy Meal toys and they give them to us and it really means a lot to a kid. So, we'll keep going this way. So it's very sad when you realize at the circumstances of a lot of people where maybe it's a single parent and that parent has to work to have insurance or you know just any number of situations. So the nursing staff here becomes really important because they're the child's primary contact for many, many instances, months. That little guy was almost two months old, and he's, you know, this is his family right now. Yeah. So.
we have the ability to, um, with, with other clinics and hospitals and outlying areas, we can actually have our doctors cook up through this telemedicine. They have a computer screen and they have access to, um, they're affiliated with, with doctors on, on the other end. And our doctor can actually take, the, the doctor on the other end can take an ear thing and put it in and our doctor can actually look in and see the ear, listen to the heartbeat. It's the, again, the equipment is state of the art, but the facility itself could use a little updating. Is there anyone in there right now? Mm -hmm. okay. The difference here and in what we're trying to achieve with the new intensive care unit is just astounding. There, you can see there's not a bathroom for them to use. There's not a, a place to, I mean, there's really not a place to have any privacy. Um, there's all this noise and everything going on. So we're really trying to make some improvements here. Due to budgetary constraints and other means, we actually consolidated our two adult pharmacies. We had one pharmacy probably five times bigger than this space that served half the hospital and the other pharmacy served the other half. Mm -hmm. We moved them all into eight and by the vacating of space due to basically just trying to cut corners and save money um, that space became available so we're moving oh, out nice. of the, we're moving out of the studio apartment we're moving into a penthouse. Cool. <laughs> so we're very excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so this, this pharmacy and the new pharmacy on 6 services all the pediatric patients, our, <coughs> our most special and vulnerable patients. So yes, that's right. We take extra care. We have a lot of systems in place in pharmacy for our peds patients that we don't necessarily do for the others because if we were to make an error for a child, <coughs> it could be magnified 10, 20 times because they're so tiny, especially a neonate, right? Not so much on an adult, so we're still careful and we still have the checks and balances and checks, but for our PEDS patients, we throw in an extra check. Well, also so, adults can question you, but these little people can't, they can't so they so, rely totally on you. So we uh, take a lot of extra measures. We also have these machines that you probably see around there called Pixis machines, and for lack of a better word, they're drug dispensing ATMs. So instead of getting $20 bills, they give out <laughs> suppositories and other. <laughs> But, so it's really important for us to spread the message to outlying communities that if your child is, is seriously ill or injured, there's a good chance that they're going to end up here because we can care for them. So that's why we, we try to do the outreach on all the outlying communities. And so somebody might ask you guys that too. Well, why, you know, if you have a friend in Fresno or somewhere, uh, Reading, why they should care about UC Davis when it's so far away. But we really do serve a large area. So, and that's it. Hi, my name is Leslie McBride. I'm Program Coordinator for Children's Miracle Network here at UC Davis Children's Hospital. And please support our children by attending the Unity event May 28th. All proceeds will benefit UC Davis Children's Hospital. Thanks for your support.